Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this session. In this session, I will explain how to implement a self-service culture through proper turf management, making it accessible to developers for complete independent work, effectively implementing a significant part of internal developer platform and IDP. But before we start, let's make a, a brief introduction. So my name is Joket Bramok Yosef. I've been in the DevOps industry for over 10 years, and I am the founder of Sonora Dev, a platform offering free resources on platform engineering and cloud resources. Additionally, I consult for organizations looking to build an internal developer platform. And before we understand how to build such a platform, let's first understand what an IDP is and why it's important for us. So an IDP is a set of tools and services that enable developers to do anything themselves. And it allows us to eliminate the bottleneck created on DevOps and infrastructure teams, significantly improving the developer productivity, the development experience, and of course, the development speed. And in the diagram here, you can see the flow that I assume most organizations follow. Okay, the development teams request a change in infrastructure or the creation of new infrastructure. The DevOps or SRE edits their from code, runs apply, and once everything works, updates the developers that the infrastructure is ready. And here is the, his where the bottle, bottleneck occurs, right? There are many developers in the organization, all needing help, not necessarily related to infrastructure updates, right? The DevOps teams have diverse tasks and their demand is high during the development. So how does the flow look in an organization with an IDP where developers are completely independent? This is how it looks. Okay, the DevOps team maintains the infrastructure code, but the development teams use and manage it. Okay, for any change, creation, or even deletion, there is no need to wait for infrastructure teams. The developers can do everything by themselves using the code created by the infrastructure teams, of course. But wait, developers usually don't have infrastructure knowledge, which can lead to wasting developer time and even harming productivity. Not to mention the increased risk of human errors, right? So yes, if we don't implement it correctly, it can have the opposite effect. Therefore, I will now present the steps for proper implementation so you can follow the session and do it yourself, provide developers with the infrastructure for independent work, and go to drink your coffee peacefully. So let's go through the steps together. In this step, the first step, we focus on creating our infrastructure as code using building blocks, okay? Think of these blocks like Lego pieces. Each piece is a small reusable module that represents specific part of infrastructure, such as VPC, subnet, or EC2 instance. By using modular components, we ensure that our infrastructure is both reusable and maintainable. This approach allows us to piece together these blocks to form larger and more complex systems with ease. And to make our building blocks even more powerful, we use variables. Variables allows us to parameterize our uh, modules, making them flexible and adaptable, adaptable to different use cases. Okay, for example, instead of hard coding a specific instance type of region, we use variables to pass these values into the modules. This way, the same module can be used across different environments and projects with minimal change. Organizing our infrastructure into layers. This is crucial for managing states, policies, permissions effectively. And by dividing our infrastructure into layers such uh, as this slide, okay, networking, compute, storage, shared resources, and so on, we can apply different management strategies to each layer. 
This separation also helps in uh, maintaining clear boundaries and responsibilities, making it easier to manage and troubleshoot our infrastructure. Workspaces in Terraform provide an isolated environment for different stages of our infrastructure, such as development, testing, staging, and production, and so on. These isolations allow uh, the developer to create, test, and destroy environments without affecting the others. Using the workspaces when infrastructure is written in a generic and modular way, it allows developers to create a new workspace based on the same code and use it as personal environment or feature environment that can be removed when no longer needed, for example, by pull request events, and all while ensuring our stable environments are not affected by ongoing testing or development. Pre-built templates are a great way to speed up the deployment process or service creation process, which is great and important in microservice architectures. And these templates serve as blueprints for common infrastructure and, uh, patterns and configurations. And by providing the templates, we reduce the time and the effort required to set up a new environment or service, ensuring consistency and best practices across organizations, which is very important in the self-service culture. And in self-service culture, collaboration is key in any infrastructure project. So using deployment tools like Terraform Cloud or other CICD platforms, helps streamline the teamwork and manage the deployments more effectively. Okay, I love NFZero and Torque as well. So I added these tools uh, to the slide. And these tools provide features like drift detection, policies, and automated workflow, and making it easier for teams to collaborate and deploy infrastructure safely and uh, efficiently. And last but not least, uh, before we giving the developers the capability to make anything they want, it's crucial to ensure they have the necessary, uh, necessary knowledge and training, okay? They don't need to be DevOps or SRE expert, right? But they should understand the implications of their actions. So providing training sessions, internal workshops, and documentation helps equip uh, developers with the skills they need to manage the infrastructure safely and effectively. Let's demo it. Okay, so here we see a basic diagram of two templates, one for an ECS application and one for a serverless application. Each template contains blocks associated with specific layers, shared, app, and network. The app layer is the one I will be making available to developers as a self-serve option. This layer will contain application resources that developers can edit, add to, or remove from. All the workspaces in this layer will have access to the information exposed by the other layers, shared and network, actually the outputs of the states. But any changes made in the app workspaces will not affect the shared and the network layers. We will also restrict developers from making changes to the states of those layers, the shared and the network. Okay, so here is a basic example of an ECS template I created. In the root directory, we have the Docker file, the readme, and the application's requirements. In the source folder, you will find the Python code where I created a very basic Hello World application. And the demo focus is on the last directory, the infrastructure. Inside this uh, directory, you will find three subdirectories, each representing a layer. The shared and the network layers contain uh, resources that are common to all the app environments, the app workspaces, actually. But only DevOps and infrastructure personnel have permissions to make change there. For instance, I've placed the ECR repository in the shared layer, which will store the images for all the environments. These images will be uploaded uh, by the CI-CD pipeline, which I also created as part of the shared layer. 
In the network layer, you will find the VPC, NAT gateway, and any other resources related to the communication of our services. In these two layers, we will not create a workspace per environment, okay? Instead, we will have a single workspace or two, for example, non-prod and prod. And in the app layer, we will place all the resources related to our application. Here, for instance, I've only included the ECS cluster, but if we need a database that should exist in every environment, in every app workspace, we will create in the app layer as well. And now we can define this project as a template. The simplest way to make templates accessible is through GitHub. This is especially useful for those who don't use the developer portal or any other self-service tool. By checking a checkbox in the repository settings, you can mark the repository as a template. This way, when creating a new repository, developers can choose to use the template. And of course, if we want to enhance the process, we can add cookie cutter and automation that runs immediately after the repository is created using GitHub Actions, for example. Alternatively, we could even run the entire process through developer portal or the infrastructure deployment tool you are using. As I mentioned earlier, Collaboration is crucial when working with infrastructures. Therefore, any change, creations, or deletions of app workspaces, as well as shared and network workspaces, should be done through the infrastructure deployment tool adopted by your organization. If you don't have one yet, talk to me after the session, and I will send you recommendations and reviews based on the extensive research I've conducted. And that's it. Thank you for listening. You can scan the code and watch free resources that I publish every week. And of course, feel free to ask questions if you have in the chat. Bye-bye.